today's lesson is moving beyond what Dalgoki wrote in his book, and so now we're dealing with sword and buckler and some of the other secondaries that we have. Uh, so a few things I want to point out first is that we're looking at Morozo Machalino, but kind of viewed through the lens of Dalagoki, how perhaps he would see these things, how he would describe these actions. Uh, so we'll do a few of these actions today, uh, specifically for Kurunga Alta, and I will present how Machalino did, that's where we're starting. And also a few cases show how, for example, Dalagoki would have done it based on everything we've seen so far. So a few basic things to kind of mention is all of our guards are the same, with a few notable exceptions. So all of our guards are the same, and we want to treat our buckler as being the same thing as a cloak or dagger, so I'm in guard with both of my weapons. I'm not just putting it in the middle, it's going to create that wall on one side of my body if I'm in a static guard, meaning the Anticordinal guards or the Iron Gate and Iron Kodolonga and Iron Gate guards. We also have a high guard, which is essentially just Ali Korma, but point facing back. By Dalagoke's time, he didn't really use that. He said it's all out of use. And even when looked at, look at the uh, the sharp sword section, much between that Morozo, it's really not there either. So it exists. We're not going to be using it a lot. Uh, same thing goes for overarm, meaning my sword is literally over my arm, and underarm. We can absolutely use these. Our right shoulder is obviously facing forward, so it's more of like a, an iron gate type guard in that this side is leading. But again, we really don't see them that much uh, in that part of the book. Uh, the most important two differences here, I'd say, is that Manchulino and Maroto describe Faccia, face guard, as being this kind of guard in between. So in between Dalagoke's Faccia and Dalagoke's Entrare. So it's really anything in between those two guards, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish. So for the sake of not confusing people <laughs> who have done Dalagoke, I'm going to refer to this as kind of the, the middle guard, the, the long point guard, so it's kind of analogous to the I-33 position where we are right in the center. But again, it's anywhere in between palm up and palm down. Uh, finally, we have Testa, which they describe as being point clearly facing up, but it is going to the right of my partner's head, so to the right side of the head. Uh, and then of course, it's gonna be anywhere in between their Testa and Nagagoki's Testa, which is very clearly pointed down to the right of their head. So we may, for example, catch something in this guard and then to transition to the cut, we're gonna to have to go through Dalagoki's testa. So kind of two new things here are this middle guard in between, in the middle, and then the range of testa, which is from point up to point down. Uh, we never really use the buckler for parrying. It's not something that we're going to block with, but it is something that allows to close lines. Meaning that I will do say do say an action, I cut the leg. I'm keeping this here to prevent that attack to that from coming because the line is closed. But I'm not, for example, going to do this defense where I go into the buckler because it's too easy to deceive. So it allows you to close the lines, but I'm not going to defend with it, with one notable exception that we'll see today. Um, one more thing that I want to mention before we kind of get into Corolunga uh, Alta is that because we have this middle guard in between, and of course, Vach and Andrade, we do have, unlike Sword and Dagger, unlike Sword and Club, we've had a lot of Mezza Spada or crossed swords plays. Obviously it's not great to stay there for any period of, period of time, we want to move to the next thing, but we're going to look at some of those crossed plays, uh, cross swords plays, in the coming uh, lessons. So to start, we're looking at Kodumonga Alta, which appears to be 
the preferred starting position for both Mother of Soul and Machilino in the uh, Shark Sword section, meaning the more self-defense oriented, the more or the less flashy section. So the way that he used to describe, he did, uh, much of it in this case describes the actions is not really like we are used, we are accustomed to, and that he shows a couple defenses against say, a thrust, and then the rest is more of like these set pieces where it's a provocation, the actual attack, and then defense against that, and then we'll also really see this thing happens, you react, do this, and then we have four or five actions, and then we reset to a different guard, or maybe it's the same guard. So for much of you know, it's a little more straightforward, we just have one defense, well, one attack being the thrust, a stoccata. We have five defenses against that, and then we have a number of responses that we can do to the provocation of a thrust, followed by cut, high or low, uh, inside or outside. Madrito Oriverso. So I'm going to demonstrate all of these things uh, in sequence, and then the next video will be all of Kurungan, Strata, and so on and so forth. So my goal, my hope for this is that you see uh, some strong similarities, but also a few differences from what we have done with Tarabokia and the two secondaries. So to start with ourselves in Kurungan, here we go, right in the middle. Uh, up a little more to our right side, so I'll create this wall. We want to maintain that idea that once upper body is closed, the other side is open. And a little, uh, he much always, always wants us to start with this little chasing step, this kind of pressure my opponent into doing something, whether that's attacking, doing nothing, if they know what you have to do, or stepping back. Uh, but in this case, the, the idea is that they're going to attack with a thrust once we've done this, once we've provoked them to action. So the first one is we're going to come in, but as they thrust to our face, presumably stoccata, we're going to step to their left, going through this reverse head guard position, and strike to the inside of the arm with a reverso stramazzone. So we'll do that again. So not really defending, I'm simply striking during their attack, and I'm going to leave using a thrust through that middle position, that middle guard. The second one's a little more of a, a defense, and it's going to involve me stepping obliquely with my left foot to their left, and then with my right foot. So this is a little bit different. Uh, the reason for this will be made apparent pretty quickly. So they come in, they attack, I want to defend with the false settings. I want to defend with the false settings, stepping a little bit off. And I'll have this extra bit of space and time. I'm gonna take my right foot and strike with a mandrito to the leg, finish out the triangle step, and leave with a thrust up the center. Next up, I have a, another uh, attack in the same time. So I'm not really defending, I'm simply going to step to their left and thrust to some part of the left side, depending on where the buckler is. If it's high, I'll strike low. If it's low, I'll strike high. So as they're thrusting me, I want you to thrust to them. Now, fourth is very similar to number two, except for I'm not going to use my left foot. I'm just going to defend with my right foot, trade, strike to the line of a reverso this time, and then get out again with that rising thrust. Now, finally, we have what Tadagoki would call the Bacha defense. So I'm striking through my defense, and I'm going to get back with a reverso. Uh, so, most in every single case, I went back to Kurunonga Alta. We always want to go back to that position. Uh, there's perhaps one exception here where we don't do that. So those are the basic defenses or uh, responses to a thrust. Now he goes right into these provocation-like actions, where the provocation is going to be, we're going to thrust, 
and then throw some sort of mandrito, whether it's high or low. Now, I'm going to do a number of things as the person responding. The agent's still going to do one of these one of these actions. So we have six things we can do here. And the first one is, as that thrust comes in, I want to transition and defend using chingyara. And then when that mandrito comes to the inside, I'm going to pick it up with testa, stepping across to the inside, strike to the inside, or to, to their thigh with my mandrito, and then leave with a thrust. Second, I'm going to, this is kind of like a, that's what you describe as like a changing step, where I put this here, and then come here. Dalagoke would simply just step with the right foot and have a left triangle, but I'll, but I'll show off. So the kind of much, much way of doing this is I step back, beat the thrust with the true edge, and then as the mandrito comes to our leg this time, I want to defend and strike to the leg. Uh, sorry, that again. So we are coming, so coming in, press, we're going to defend, they strike to the inside of our leg, we'll defend a false edge, carry, and throw a mandrito to their leg, and then get out. So that was the change step away. Now we'll look at the passing step, which is all we really need to make this work. So attack comes in, we defend, cut, and get out of there. Third, we're gonna step back into Iron Gate. And then as this attack comes in, we are going to defend with the false edge and cut to the leg. This is kind of the one place where we can't really go back to Kurum Health because of the action that we're doing. That's okay, we'll split up in a Kurum Guard, which is not this one. So we pressed, we are going to step back and defend with a mezzo mandrito. The mandrito comes in. This, this is obviously going to be more of a vertical one, otherwise it's not going to work. Beat, keep this covering our head, we're closing that line, and then thrust and back in Kurunoga, stret in this case. Now, four, we are going to deviate the thrust with our bow, with our left hand. So I'm not pushing it into it, but I'm just simply guiding it out of the way as I cut to the leg. To see from the side, I'm not doing like against the, a cut where I would step into it. I'm simply bringing it out of the way so I can strike the bow. So it's very similar to the, the inside slip we were talking about with uh, Diagon Cook. Next up, we have a step into the attack with a true edge preventing the second action from happening. So essentially we want you to defeat their purpose, their end, by stepping in and then immediately throwing a reverso to the face and getting out. So the forward here is uh, taking my right foot and going to their right, to their outside. So do that again here. So press, beat, cut to the face, get out. And then finally we have two attacks to the hand. So I'm trying to cut the hand from low and then as they come out with the second one, go to the hand from above. So we press in, thrust comes in, we're going to try and strike the hand and then as they come in with the second madrito, or the madrito, we're going to step to their inside, strike into the hand with a mezzo madrito. So that's it against this particular application, which is just a thrust plus a mandrito of some sort. Now the next provocation is a little different in that they are thrusting and then they're cutting by changing the feet. So essentially they're dealing with a 
feet, and then I'm coming forward with a mandrito. In this case, we have the famous do not react uh, admonition. But we still need to do something, so we're gonna move our hands so they don't just hit us in the face, because that wouldn't, uh, that wouldn't be great. And so then as they come in with a mandrito, we're going to step through testa and cut a mandrito to the leg. So hopefully we're kind of seeing a pattern here. So they do this thing. We're gonna go up to here as they go to the low line, which is now available. Or sorry, as they go to the high line, which is available. So we're here, they're gonna go for our high inside. We're gonna step across and cut the leg and get out. Finally, we have two provocations using a thrust followed by a rigor, so either high or low. So essentially, as the, as the agent, they're coming in, coming high, or they're coming in and going low, making sure the buckler is closing those lines. So now against the first one here, we're going to use the false edge, so falso dritto, stepping with our right foot. So it's either one of these things we're going to be doing this essentially. So we're going to bring ourselves towards this point down, almost test of like position. And so then as they respond with a high line, they're going to step over here, and then he says we'll draw the hand, which I interpret as being using, bring the, we'll draw the hand up to like a unicorn position, and then striking with an imbrocata. And then we will leave after striking in the face. So we'll do that again. So the thrust comes in, we'll defend it as they come to our high outside, beat with the true edge, we'll draw the hand, in quotation marks, thrust the face, and then get out, coming back to Kodilonga Alta. And then finally, if instead we went to the leg, we would use the Rigar Solidopio, which they don't call it that, but that's the, yeah, yeah, what the action is. And again, thrust the face, and then get out of there. So we're here, we defend against the first one by stepping around as they go to the leg step and thrust. So that covers all of the coding of the material in the uh, spardafilo, the, the edged blade, the, the sharp sword section. So it's some basic attacks and then some uh, first and second intention, otherwise known as provocations. In the next video we'll be looking at coding of the strata where we'll look at essentially the same sequence of actions.